Welcome back. And that discussion about the finance bill, the public wage bill, and also how the government will be funding the budget is not far from over. And this morning, I'd just like us to listen to that interview that our sister station, Spice, led by um, Eric Latif and his team, had with uh, Dr. Margaret Nyakongo, who is the controller of budget, talking about the central role of the controller of budget in a public finance. Let's listen in. Thursday, the sixth day of July, 2023. Sixth day into the new financial year. Sixth day into the second half of the year. I mean, just like that, 2023 is saying goodbye. <laughs> it's going, going, gone. And another day where there are some children who have hopes of getting access to safe drinking water thanks to everything that you're doing, that's by going into Naivas anywhere across the country or going into Naivas through their online platforms, their e-commerce platform, and purchasing Colgate. If you do that at Naivas, any tube of Colgate that you buy, some of that money will go towards helping children to smile today because some children are among the 150,000 people who will benefit from the 30 water wells being sunk by Colgate and partners in some parts of the country. They've basically scouted areas. They've seen areas that have great need for water, uh, lack of access to safe drinking water, and they've said, why don't you do just something about it? And that's helping these communities get water. So they go, they sink water wells, and they make sure that those wells are usable, and then the community gets access to that water. Mm -hmm. Primarily, the children in that community get access to water get access to sanitation services are then able to go to school and concentrate in school because their parents are not expecting them to come and go fetch water. Toka shule mapema. Uende mutoni. Mama usiende. Mama usiende shule because tunenda mutoni. Not a good thing. No. Colgate, Naivas. That's what you need to remember. And then go there with your money and purchase. Our next guest is in the studio. We've been talking about public finance management for a while, and it's good that this constitution has actually opened up that space of public finance management and conversations in the country are now uh, on how we are managing our public finances. One office that's created and placed centrally in public finance management is that of the controller of budget. The current holder of that office is CPA Dr. Margaret Nyakango. She's in the situation. Good morning, Dr. Nyakango. Good morning, Eric. Welcome to the hot seat of the Situation Room. Thank you very much for having me. Karibu sana. We are going to have two hours of a conversation where in the second hour we'll also open up the conversation so people can ask questions if they have questions that they'd like to uh, ask to understand the workings of this very, very important office, the control of budget. City, mm -hmm. you have the day's proverb. I do. Mm -hmm. And our proverbs for the whole of this week ending tomorrow... Uh, from the country of Libya. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like the sparrow, he wanted to imitate the pigeons' walk, but lost his own. Mm. Like the sparrow, he wanted to imitate the pigeons' walk. He wanted to imitate the pigeons' walk. Yes, but lost his own. Dr. Nakago is giving you that look of. <laughs> okay, pigeons, yeah. walk, sparrow, surely. Lost own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you understand from that proverb? Um, Start with your just direct translation of what it's saying. Okay, it's like uh, people have different strengths, and so if you try to copy your your neighbor or your friend, you may not succeed where they have succeeded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least on the, from just hearing it, that is what I can think of. Yes. It's, so don't copy. Don't copy. Don't yes. copy what others are doing. Yes. You are original the way you are. You are unique. You stick to your lane and you will actually move faster. Right. Okay. That's so you agree point. with me? Yeah, it sounds <laughs> it sounds reasonable. Yes. This is like a very reasonable translation yes. and interpretation of that proverb. Yes. But CT is the Mwalimu. CT? Mm -hmm. Controller of budget. On a scale of 1 to 10, 
10 being the maximum number of marks you can actually get, you've gotten 10. When we ask for your interpretation, <laughs> you cannot possibly be wrong because that is how the proverb resonates with you. Yes. Thank you. But pigeons play a very, very important role in uh, the culture of Libyans. Uh, they are also into falconry. They, they are birds. They, it's a culture where birds have very specific roles. Yes. They are those that are bred for purposes of eating. Right. They are those that are bred for purposes of entertainment, pastime. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. their culture is actually very rich in birds. So when you have a proverb, the proverb often points you to a, a country's culture mm -hmm. or the mention of animals. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, you don't hear proverbs dealing with giraffes and elephants coming from the UK. Or the, or the U.S. <laughs> no. <laughs> Neither do you hear probably kangaroos coming from Africa. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yes. It depends on where you come from. Depends on and what's around you. Yes. Okay. Now, the Constitution of Kenya 2010, you know, we call it the very progressive constitution, one of the most progressive constitutions in this of this generation in the world, has created constitutional commissions and independent offices. Right. One of those is the controller of budget. Now, please introduce us to this office of controller of budget, how it's established in law and functions and roles. Thank you very much, Eric. The office of the controller of budget uh, was created, rather is created, under Article 228 of the Constitution of Kenya. You will observe that immediately after 228, 229 creates the office of the Auditor General. Yes. There is a bit of history to that. Um, from our colonial uh, history, we had the office of the Controller and Auditor General. So the two offices were together. Mm. So for a long time, the mm. controllership was under a department called the Exchequer. And then the, the other department of audit was audit. So the whole office was exchequer and audit. Mm. But the committee of experts, having looked at the operations of that combined office, felt like there was a lacuna in terms of reporting on budget implementation. Mm. It was also felt that auditing coming at the tail end of the expenditure was missing out on what is happening in between. Not to mention that audits took rather long yeah. to come along. So the Committee of Experts then created the Office of the Control of Budget to take care of those roles that they felt were not coming out in the combined setup. And they created nine roles, and uh, I'll be going through them. Mm -hmm. But that is the history, and uh, the Auditor General still continues as an independent office, and uh, then the Control of Budget is another uh, independent mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. Office, not commission. Office. We are not called commissions. It's an independent we, office. Independent office. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Okay. I am the second in the lineup. There was one uh, who did the first eight years, and I'm supposed to do another eight years. I'm on the fourth. You're halfway eight. through your term. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah, almost mm. done. What halfway. are those seven functions? Yes. Now, the functions then that uh, were not coming through with, in the combined office, mm. one is oversight. And by oversight, we are talking about... Uh, like overseeing how budgets are being executed from the time the budgets are prepared mm. all the way to when the financial statements are prepared. What happens in between? So my office does that through uh, monitoring how the budget implementation is being done, approving withdrawals mm -hmm. under articles 204, 206, and 207. Mm -hmm. What these articles talk about is how the money moves 
from the consolidated fund, from the equalization fund, and from the county revenue fund. So there is a process of how the funds move. So to provide that oversight, I sign off each and every withdrawal from the consolidated fund to these other accounts mm -hmm. to ensure that they are within the law mm -hmm. before the funds are released. Okay. So that's one of them. Mm -hmm. Then there is the controlling role. And in the controlling role, I keep monitoring, comparing what is in the Appropriation Act vis-a-vis -vis what is being reported back. And in my quarterly reports, I give that status. You will be seeing a lot of times we are talking of absorption rates. Yeah. So we are comparing what the targets were vis-a-vis -vis what is actually happening. Then, incidental to uh, the oversight and the controlling, I report. Mm -hmm. And this is a mandate of reporting to parliament because parliament is my boss. Mm -hmm. I don't have any other boss. So at the end of every quarter, I collect data from all the spending entities, both for national and county governments. Mm. And I compile these the quarterly reports and submit them to parliament mm -hmm. before I can make them public to anybody else. Other than that, I have an advisory role. Mm. I advise all governments, both national and county, on the budget making process following the PFM Act and the Constitution, following the provisions of prudent transparency and accountability, and uh, tell them what is expected of them, even as I report on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. Incidental to these roles is an investigation role. Every so often, you know, things may go wrong, Mm. Uh, people either don't do the right thing mm. or they do the right thing in the wrong way. And uh, as far as budget implementation is concerned, my office will investigate either on our, our own mm. or sometimes we get complaints from the public or other institutions and we investigate. That is also our role. Now, disputes arise. You know, especially in the county governments, we have the county assembly yep. and then we have the executive. And every so often there are misunderstandings, mm. especially relating to budget allocations, where the projects are. Mm. And uh, my office then has the mandate of mediating. Mm. Yeah, so I do conciliation, negotiations, and I ensure that the parties come to an understanding so that they can move on. You may have heard that sometimes the budget is not even passed yep. because of those disputes. Mm -hmm. So I have that role. Other than that, I do public sensitization. Either I go out to the people, uh, but sensitization takes place all the time. What I'm doing right now is public sensitization. When my reports come out, we partner with the press, the print media, uh, TV, uh, I mean, all, all the media and uh, ensure that the message gets out. Mm. That's what the people um, are reading out there. Mm -hmm. So then I have a monitoring role and monitoring is incidental to the reporting function. Yeah. As I said before, um, we receive uh, information that is self-reported from the spending entities. So what we do every so often is to actually go out to the ground. So I send my teams mm. out there to the counties and uh, they go to the sites where projects have been reported mm. and we, we assess, we evaluate whether the figures we've been given agree with what we are seeing on the ground. Okay. Other than that, we also monitor processes. Mm. For instance, lately we have been monitoring the program-based budget, ensuring that the outcomes 
that are reflected in the budgets are being adhered to and or they can be achieved at the end of the day. And uh, lastly, uh, of the main mandates is to enforce budget ceilings. Mm. We know that in national government, um, budget ceilings uh, are passed by parliament mm. and in the, at the counties, they are passed by the county assemblies uh, before the budgets can become operational. Then they become an act, an mm. appropriation act. It is the role of my office to ensure that they keep within those limits. So those are like, there is a ceiling to everything. Mm. And my office then, while reporting, we ensure that those limits are being kept. Also, when they make their requisitions, we ensure that they are within those limits. So those are the nine key roles. Can you give us an example of a budget ceiling? Yes. Give us an example of... Okay. One example, for instance, is that um, they must budget 30% of the entire budget to development. Mm -hmm. So when they are budgeting, I must make sure that they have allocated. Now, when it comes to spending, that's another story. Yeah. At the point of budgeting, I must make sure that 30% has been allocated to development. Mm. Then when I report on a quarterly basis, I ensure that I am checking the monitoring the progress of the 30 percent. Mm. 70 percent is on recurrent. recurrent. Now, of the 70 percent recurrent, no more than 35 percent should go to personal emoluments, that is salaries and wages. Mm -hmm. So again, that is a ceiling that we keep reporting on. There is a lot of default, <laughs> <laughs> but that's mm. a story for another day. Uh, so, uh, the, I was giving you one, so you are one able of the to see at that point when the budget is being made that the 70% that's been allocated to recurrent expenditure, yes. 35%, no more than 35% will go to personal emoluments, right? The salaries, mm -hmm. wages, does it also include pension? No, the, yeah, it, you know, the salary is gross. Mm. So out of the 70 percent even the pension is in even whatever else even house allowance you know all those Everything components that. that make the gross pay mm -hmm. yes okay mm. uh, dr you talk about um parliament having the final say in then what you will then go ahead and release yes. is it at all possible that somebody apart from parliament would make a demand on the Office of the Control of Budget for money to be released for something, and then you would go ahead and acquiesce to that? Well, it is not as simple as that, mm -hmm. but the law provides under Article 223 of the Constitution that something can come up that was not foreseen mm -hmm. and has not been budgeted for, mm -hmm. in which case then the spending entity will approach the cabinet secretary for finance mm -hmm. that is the only one who has that authority and explain what this matter is mm -hmm. that was not budgeted for and needs to be financed mm -hmm. so once the cabinet secretary gives that approval the spending entity must ensure that they provide details of this spending within two months mm -hmm. to parliament so that parliament can pick up that particular aspect of the spending and allow it to be appropriated. Mm -hmm. Now, we have what we call supplementary appropriation. Mm -hmm. So ab about midway through the year, that is December, we have the first supplementary and then later um, towards the end of the financial year again, we'll have supplementary too. So it is at these times that any spending that may have been done mm -hmm. under Article 223 is then discussed in Parliament and allowed to go under the supplementary. Okay. So once the Parliament approves the supplementary budget, then that particular spending now becomes part of mm. the budget. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's regularized. It is regularized. 
Yes. And the only so thing that you need now for you to approve the withdrawal of those funds is this application by the CS Treasury. Yes. Mm. The spending entity mm. will apply to the CS Treasury and the CS Treasury will approve and then send me that information and say you can approve mm -hmm. this withdrawal pending parliamentary regularization. Mm. So then it is not possible for money to be spent at the national or county level without your approval. That's right. Okay. Yes. So if a situation has arisen whereby, you know, there's not enough, does, and we say that money has been spent at this level, at this level, mm. it is not, and forgive me if I'm putting words in your mouth, but it is not likely that money would have been spent at the national level or at the county level had it not gone through approval by the controller of budget. Okay, but there is a caveat to that. Okay. okay. Now, we have monies that are not received in the consolidated fund. Mm -hmm. Yes. We have, for instance, the road development levy mm. that is not uh, received in the consolidated fund. We have the railway development levy. We have uh, a lot of grants and loans. Mm that are not banked in the consolidated fund. Where do they go? Uh, they are spent directly with the authority of the National Treasury. Okay. Spent directly? By yes. Whom? They, now, for this specific, like the funds I'm telling you, mm. there would usually be an act that governs that particular funding the railway development fund yes mm -hmm. yes so you will find that the 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 cs national treasury and the ps national treasury are mentioned in that particular law yeah so it will be like a, a specific law mm. so you'll find for instance that the money that is spent by kenya roads board mm. for instance doesn't go through my office okay Yes. So this is like, because we see those signs on the roads. Yes. This road has been maintained by the... Fuel levy. Fuel yeah. levy. Yes. So that levy, we pay it when we are consuming yes. fuel at the point of purchase. Mm. That money goes straight to the National Treasury. It goes straight to the National Treasury and mm. to the roads boards. And then the roads board through, yeah. of course, the roads ministry. Yes. Without going through the control of budget. But... But... So as I was finishing, mm -hmm. was to say that as long as the funds 